When I say bucket, you say bag. You're supposed to say bucket. When I say bucket, and you oh. didn't say bucket. When I say bucket, you say bag. Bucket. Bag. Bucket. Bag. bag. Oh. You're ruining it. I always did. Kelsey okay. wants to be her own cheerleader. Hey guys, we're the Story Girls, and my name is Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And the Story Girls are kind of sick right now. Pray for TSG. And if you guys have never been to our channel before, hello and welcome, and we're so happy to have you. And you know, maybe think about subscribing while you watch this video, because you know, it's free. It's free. So, you know that like bucket bag trend, guys? We literally were shopping the other week and every single store we went into had bucket bags. Like, every store. And we were like, hmm. We're seeing these everywhere. I feel like you guys might be into it. Seems like everyone else is into it, so we gotta DIY it. We did it. So we know um, a fabric and leather store in Toronto uh, where you can get like leather samples, so mm -hmm. it's a little bit cheaper. But if you're not from a big city that has a place like that, don't worry, you can just use any fabric that's a bit thicker. Like canvas and, or something. Yeah, and it'll be great. But if you are from Toronto, we'll link that place below because I know when I'm watching Toronto YouTubers, I'm like, I know you live near me. Tell yeah. me where it is so I can go too. Yeah, So we, we will let you guys know. But anyways, on to the tutorial. To make this bucket bag, you're going to need a leather sample or any other thick canvas-like material. We got this piece we're using for $26. So based on how much fabric you have, we're going to make a template for a bag consisting of one rectangle piece and one circle. So we had room on our fabric for a 24 inch by a 12 inch rectangle. So we cut that out of our paper to make a template. This is including an extra inch all the way around for a seam allowance. For our circle size, we took our circumference of 22 inches and did this math to get the radius, which ended up being around three and three quarters inches. To draw out our circle, we found a middle point on our paper and then measured out the radius in all directions. A compass is also a really good option for this step, but we just didn't have one and found out this was the best option for us to get the most accurate circle. Once our rectangle and circle are cut out, we are going to trace these shapes onto our leather or fabric and then cut them out. Now we're going to pin our two pieces together by putting pins close to the edge so that any pinholes will be in the seam line and rotate the circle slowly creating a cylinder shape while you pin the two pieces together. When you made it all the way around your circle, it will look like this. Then we're going to pin our two rectangle pieces together at the top. We'll be sewing these up later, but for right now it's easier to leave it unpinned. And here we go, sewing it up slowly, going around in a circle. Make sure you have a leather needle while you do this, if you're using leather or a thick fabric. This part wasn't actually as hard as it looks. When you get to the end where the two rectangle pieces meet, try to sew them to the circle as close as possible to have no or little gap. When it's done, it's gonna look like this. And now we have to sew the two edges of our rectangle pieces together. Make sure that everything is still in line and straight and pin where you want your seam to go. If you have excess fabric, you can draw a line and cut the excess off. When it's all sewn up, it will look like this and we can turn it inside out. Now for the straps. Since we were using scrap leather, we had to do some assembling to make the straps long enough. We cut out two pieces of leather that were 30 inches long by an inch wide and four that were six inches by one inch wide. We then overlapped them by an inch and did two stitches where they overlapped to hold them together. Again, skip this step if you have enough fabric or leather to do one long strap, which we would have wanted to do if we could. We're also doubling up everything that we do, that's why there's a lot, because we're going to be making two straps to stitch them together. Next we made the ends come to a triangle point, and we're going to make a hole so that we can fit this screw stud in just for style, because it looks really nice. We just wanted to use the screw side, not actually the knob it came with, so we're just using it inside out. Finding the center point at the tip, we used our leather punch to make a hole the right size for the screw stud and repeat this on all ends. We then took our bag and measured an inch down where we wanted the handles to go, which are on opposite sides of the bag, of course, and make the same hole with the leather punch. Next, we are going to assemble and sew. Putting the two bad sides of our straps together, we are going to line it up with the hole in the bag. You can put your screw stud in at this point to hold it in place, but you'll probably want to take it out before you start sewing. Now we're going to pin up one side of the strap, that's probably all you're going to need, uh, wherever the stitch is going to go so that any pinholes are underneath the seam line. 
You can skip this step if you don't mind the raw inside of your leather or fabric. We just did this for strength and so that the inside of our strap wasn't the inside of the leather. Once it's all pinned, you're going to take it to your sewing machine and sew one line from where the screw hole is on one side of your bag all the way to where the other side is. And then repeat it again on the other side of your strap. Next, we're going to make slits that allow our bag to be pulled shut. Starting on one side of the handle, measure out slit marks that are roughly two and a half inches apart that straddle where the handles are. Measuring the distance between your two end slits, divide this by five to get the length of your remaining split spaces. These will probably end up being around 1.5 to two inches long. Then using an X-Acto knife, cut the slits as wide as the rope you'll be using to close your bag. Loop the rope through, start with one piece on one side and work your way around creating a C shape, looping in and out of the slit. For the second rope, make sure to start at the opposite side of the bag and repeat the same process. basically creating two opposite facing C shapes with our rope. When this is finished, you should be able to tighten and loosen your bag easily. To end our leather ropes, we just tied the two strings together, but definitely feel free to add a tassel or any other decorative element. We also made another mini bucket bag in a nude shade, and these bags are super customizable and can be made in any size. So I hope you guys like that DIY. It is a little bit more difficult. It's like on the more intermediate level, but I think it turned out amazing. And if you do know how to work a sewing machine, uh, just make sure you get that leather needle and have a go at it. Just try it. Why not? Right? Some of them are like literally so expensive. And if you can make it yourself, like so good, so good. And like challenge yourself. We didn't, we were like, mm, let's see if this works. Like try it, try an example for it. And then it just ended up working. And we've been doing a ton of really easy ones lately. So I think we deserve this one. We deserve the hard <laughs> one. Challenge ourselves, do some math. What was that? Struggle! <laughs> and if you guys do end up making your own bucket bags, make sure you send them to us on our Instagrams or Twitters or whatever you want because we love when you guys make our DIYs. Yes, I'm excited for you guys to try this one. I'm so excited. And speaking of Instagram and Twitter, make sure you guys are following uh, both of us and our The Story Girls Twitter because we're going to be doing a Q&A video and if you guys don't know, we have a vlog channel where we've actually been vlogging a lot recently. It's pretty good. And we're going to put up a Q&A over there because that's where our Q&As go. So make sure you're following The Story Life, which is our vlog camera and obviously vlog camera, which is our vlog channel, <laughs> and obviously everything is in the description below. Um, so if you follow us on those places, we're gonna also gonna have an Instagram post right now when you're watching this that you can ask your questions and we'll put up that Q&A very shortly. And make sure if you're on Twitter, use the hashtag AskTSG. AskTSG. And That's we can totally find your asks and we can answer them for you. We also started Snapchat. That's fun. That's I mean, a thing. Follow us on that. We're gonna see how that goes. <laughs> you know, if you don't get enough of us here, you don't get enough of us on our vlog channel <laughs> or Instagram, you can always follow us on Snapchat. I mean, everything has its perks. Snap is fun because it's instant and not forever. So thank you so much for joining us today, guys. And if you guys like it, like it. And if you love it, make sure to sub it. Woop woop. All right, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>